the ultimate guide to buying property, global real estate. Guys, if you don't know, I love real estate. So I love real estate, not only in the United States of America, the best country out here, but also across the world. So I know a lot about a different markets, whether that be in Japan, Thailand, and Asia, and Africa, and South America. I mean, I've been going to development properties for a long time until today. We're going to be talking about real estate in Japan. And I think it's a very interesting thing that we have here in Japan. So I actually want to just kind of guide you to a couple of things of buying real estate in Tokyo and just in Japan in general. So let's get started, man. All right. So and what you'll see on the right here is just a video of one of the many people who talk about real estate in Japan. And you guys can kind of see what it looks like at the same time that I would be talking. OK, so Tokyo, Japan, bustling capital is one of the most exciting and dynamic cities in the world. And with its unique blend of traditional and modern amenities, it's no surprise that many foreigners are drawn to the idea of owning property in Japan. And whether you're looking for a place to call home or a lucrative investment opportunity, Tokyo's real estate market has something to offer everybody. It's a very safe country, too, might I add. In this comprehensive guide, or what I'll be discussing in this video, we'll explore the best areas to buy property in Tokyo. And basically, we're going to walk through the purchasing process, all right? The cost of real estate in Japan and other essential tips to help you make an informed decision. One of the things that most people might not know is it's hard in Asia to actually find a country that will allow you to buy free sample, free hold, own it outright without a lease. And so net-net, it's not an easy place to navigate. And Japan, fortunately, is one of the places that it allows you to own apartment and a home and land. Now, there are some requirements in addition, like farmland and et cetera, but just regular land with a house, it's more simplistic and you can own it. Unlike places like Thailand, where you have to go around the law or create some other different type of entity like a company to own it. And that's in a gray area anyways. So. I speak to up and coming neighborhoods, but I kind of just want to move to the part of how to buy a property in a place like Tokyo. And most people might be sitting back like, why would someone even think about buying a property in Tokyo? Well, I'm just saying, again, guys, it's really safe. It's a safe place and it's very interesting. The culture is amazing. And I think that the USD right now is definitely beating the Japanese yen. So this is a great time to just even check it out. Go travel there. All right. How to buy property in Tokyo. Here's the process. Now that you have a better idea of why you would want to buy a property, let's dive into the purchasing process itself. Buying real estate and even land houses in Japan as a foreigner is straightforward compared to elsewhere in Asia, as I told you, places like Thailand, Cambodia, etc. And yet there are several key steps and considerations to keep in mind. Part number one, guys. Hire a real estate agent, all right? In Japan, properties typically bought and sold, they're sold and bought through real estate agents rather than directly between the buyer and seller. As a foreign buyer, it's essential to work with an agent who has experience with dealing with international clients and communicate effectively in your language. A solid real estate agent in Tokyo will help you navigate the market and find properties that match your criteria and guide you through the purchase process. They can also provide valuable insight to a local market trends and cultural norms. Now, that's slightly different than you know, probably back home when you have an actual real estate agent. The second part is securing funding. So if you guys are coming with the bag, there's nothing to discuss. But if you need financing, then before you start your property search in earnest, it's wise to get pre-approval for a mortgage. As I told you guys, get to check. See how much you can borrow before you go out shopping, all right? Don't go window shopping with literally no funds. <laughs> and, and you don't even know how you can secure the money. Many Japanese banks offer home loans to foreign buyers, although the requirements and conditions may vary depending on the lender and your individual circumstances. Generally, to qualify for a mortgage in Japan, you'll need to have a valid visa, proof of stable income, and a good credit history. Banks in Japan may also require a Japanese grantor or a higher down payment 
from foreign borrowers. That's for foreigners. So for loans. Yeah, I don't know what else they call you in Japan. But in Thailand, they call you a falong. Interest rates on mortgages in Japan are relatively low, ranging from 0.1%. I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get that <laughs> to 5%. And you should be prepared to provide extensive documentation and face a longer approval process compared to what you might be used to in your home country. And of course, right, you're in a different country, so that makes a little bit sense, right? So finding property and scheduling viewings. And with your financing secured and a clear idea of your budget and preferences, you can start actively searching for properties with your real estate agent in Tokyo and elsewhere in Japan. Be sure to communicate your requirements clearly, including your desired location, size, layout, and any specific features you're looking for. No different than any property, guys. Your agent will likely provide you with a list of suitable properties and arrange viewings for those that interest you. And when visiting properties, pay close attention to the condition of the building, the layout of the unit, and the surrounding neighborhood, special to the neighborhood, guys, okay? Take note of any potential issues or drawbacks, such as noise levels, natural light, and the age of the building. And one of the things I do when I'm also viewing properties is I come back at nighttime, not maybe in the property, but to the neighborhood, because the property might not be accessible at nighttime. But I do come back and see the vibes at nighttime in the neighborhood. I did that for one property in Baltimore. Woo! Good thing I did that, because at the nighttime, it was nothing but thugs. In the daytime, there was no thugs, all right? <laughs> Point number four, make an offer and negotiate the sale. This is the time, the art of the deal. Once you found a property that meets your criteria, your real estate agent will assist you in making an offer to the seller. This typically involves submitting a written proposal, which includes the price you're willing to pay, any conditions or contingencies, and that's basically terms, if, ands, buts, and your desired closing date. If you or if your offer is accepted, you'll proceed to the next stage of the process, which involves signing a purchase agreement and paying a deposit. The deposit usually is around 10%, usually, guys, okay? Keep in mind that in Japan, verbal agreements are considered binding, so be cautious about making any informal commitments before you're ready to proceed. Again, don't be in the house talking about, man, I'm going to buy it. Man, shaking people's hands, kissing babies, like, oh, it's, it's going down. I'm for sure buying it. Like, don't do that because let me highlight this once again. Keep in mind that in Japan, verbal agreements are considered binding. So be cautious about making any informal commitments before you're ready to proceed. All right? Make sure that. Shaking hands, kissing babies. Oh, I'm a buy. You know I'm a buy. I, don't, I I love this place. And then now you will be like, well, in America, and eh, that ain't going to help you. Number five, complete legal and admin procedures. After signing a purchase agreement, there are several legal and administrative tasks to complete before the property could be officially transferred to your name. These include number one, conducting a title search to ensure that there is no outstanding liens or encumberments on the property. Number two, obtaining a real estate registration certificate from the local legal affairs bureau. Number three, arranging for the transfer of utilities and the payment of any outstanding bills. And number four, preparing and submitting the necessary documents, tax documents and registration forms. Your real estate agent and your licensed judicial legal professional who specializes in real estate transactions will typically handle most of these tasks on your behalf. So you'll have the agent and basically the lawyer. However, you'll need to provide certain documents such as your passport, residence card, and personal seal. Now, let's go to number six, finalize payment and take possession. Yeah, we want the house. We want to live there. Not this house. That's coming up on the screen. It looks all right. Let's go. Finalize payment and take possession. On the agreed closing date, you'll meet with the seller, your real estate agent, and that lawyer to finalize the transaction. This involves transferring the remaining balance of the purchase price. So you paid 10, now you pay the 
hundred thousand, you paid ten thousand, now pay the ninety. And so that you pay the rest of the purchaser price to the seller and paying any applicable tax and fees, such as stamp duty and registration tax, and receive the keys to your new property. You're international now. Once all the necessary payments have been made and the paperwork has been completed, the property will be officially registered in your name and you'll be able to take possession of your new home or your investment property in Tokyo. Sounds amazing. Straightforward, not too confusing. Hope you are watching the video on the side, just showing kind of a couple of houses that's been on sale. It's pretty cool and interesting. This is an interesting YouTube or excuse me, Instagram that I follow about properties in Japan. And so, you know, there's some tips out here, tips for successful home purchases in Tokyo. Number one, understand the difference between the different types of properties that are available. And there's a big difference between uh, different types of homes. You have number two, consider the age of the building. You have to be very careful about that in Japan. Number three, factors in additional costs like taxes. Number four, prepare for cultural barriers. Buying a property in Japan, especially Tokyo, as a foreigner can come with its share of language and cultural challenges. Number five, have a long-term investment strategy if you're using it for an investment. And so at the end of the day, is owning property in Japan a good idea? Well, Tokyo's housing market can be exciting and profitable venture for foreign investors. It can also be overwhelming, as you expect, in a metro area with a population exceeding 30 million. By understanding each area from the affordability of the Western wards to the prestige central districts, you can identify the best location to suit your budget, lifestyle, and investment goals. Ultimately, whether you're seeking a comfortable home in one of the world's most vibrant cities or a lucrative investment in a stable, mature market, Tokyo real estate scene has something to offer. And with the right approach and mindset, buying property in this fascinating metropolitan can be an enriching experience both financially and personally. Shout outs to Japan. Now, I want to show you guys a couple of examples of properties. Now, these properties are slightly different, so don't be like, oh, I'm finna go buy these properties. Let me bring it up on a bigger screen for you guys. These are just some of the Instagrams that I follow. And as you can see, these houses about places in Japan. And you can see the price, 40 grand, 90, 30 grand, 25,000. These are little older homes. They come with different types of conditions and different type of circumstances. And they're all across Japan, not just Tokyo. So it's just very interesting, you know, 200,000, 373,000 to, you know, 34,000, depending on where you're at, the location. So those are interesting. Those are properties. Uh, you could go follow that channel right there. Let me get that out the way. I'm going to show you another one that's coming up here. And then we're going to close out. Let's go to this one, Cheap Houses Japan. I like this one. Follow this one. As you can see, there we go again. 33, 25,000, 23, 62, 23,000, 40,000, 111K, 6,000. I'm trying to get that 6,000 cribbo. Cut it out. 6,000. What they talking about? I'll be in the middle of nowhere. Live or just a 10-minute walk from the sea? Ooh, 10-minute walk from the sea. What are we talking about? Relatively new city, founded in 2004 after the emergence of three former towns. It's about two hours drive from Osaka. That's not bad. The property was constructed in the 1920s. Good year. Features three rooms. I just made that up. A traditional Japanese-style kitchen. shout out to the Japanese-style kitchen. And it was recently renovated and includes over 300 square meters of land and two houses in a parking spot. Woo! What it look like? Let me see. Uh, look at that. For six grand, you guys spend more on some Jordans. 
for a cribbo. Man, that's almost more than I rented the BMW for. Almost. It's half. Shoot. I need to get out to Japan. Let me take that off the screen. Ridiculous. Now, here's another website that I follow or Instagram that I follow. It's pretty interesting. I like how they kind of summarize some things up. And this is Japan Remotely. You could go follow them. They're pretty interesting. I like how they do it here. As you can see, they're comparing houses in New Jersey and et cetera. And then as you scroll through it, right, you could see, okay, here we go. Let's compare value. USA, same square footage. The price, definitely not the same. Cash payment of $60,000. The other one, 30 years for a mortgage, 20% down payment, blah, blah, blah. 100% down, 71,000 years built. That one in Japan was newer, etc. Then they go to the next one, which would you buy? I like these little comparisons just to get people thinking. It's not saying that this is the best financially speaking. This is the best X, Y, and Z. It just shows you in comparison, right? And then they're talking about rentals here now, right? And so no more rent or mortgage, rising rents. And then you got one lump sum. Then you got monthlies, maintenance costs. And then minimum self maintenance when you're renting, a poor insulation, great insulation. So they're just making a comparison about these two different ones, right? And do I have to pay US taxes if I work in Japan? Yes, if you make money, blah, blah, blah. Don't take tax advice from this. And then in this website also tells you they're not financial advisors or CPAs. But I just like how they show these comparisons right here. It's very interesting. Um, and you could just follow these, you know, take your time, see what you think about it over time, see if it'd be something that you're interested in. And then the last guy, as I was showing while I was speaking, was basically another YouTube and actual Instagram that I follow. And he kind of just talks about what it looks like, how much it costs to invest. These are all guesstimations. And he gives stories about people buying property in Japan and maybe, you know, renting them out. Koyoto versus Honolulu. And he has good information. This IKEA is on a sale. Listen to him. Two story, four L's IKEA house with 97 square meters of living space and 99 square meters of land. And it's rebuildable. This house was built in 1965. And it seems that the owner was living here until not too long ago. And they left a lot of stuff behind. I was welcomed by this Japanese doll in kimono at the entrance. The first floor has a kitchen with a dining room, toilet, a bathroom full of stuff, a Western style room and a tatami room. The second floor has two more rooms, one Western style and one Japanese style and a balcony overlooking this view of Yokohama. It's a 20-minute walk from Kamioka Station, which is just one stop on the limited express train from Yokohama Station. So, how much is it? The cost to acquire is 6.7 million yen or $43,000. After the renovation, the expected rent is 100,000 yen per month. Would you buy an Akia like this? Leave a comment. This is an Akia. In nice, nice. And that's Ikea. So that's different. So these examples are there. I'm going to leave those links for those Instagrams in the actual description. And so this is just diving early into actual Tokyo. Why would you want to buy a property in Japan, if not Tokyo, somewhere else? It's very interesting. I think it's something to consider if you're trying to reach fire, financially independent, retire early or five financially independent or your remote worker. These are just options. Because once again, the world is yours. It's an oyster. So make a choice. Guys, thank you. I'll see you on the next installment, Global Real Estate. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you do, let me know. Give me a like, share, subscribe, whatever you guys do. But we out here. Much appreciated. Shout out.